It's on you, it's on you. One more of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but how, so how different is a Monday morning if you win compared to if you... Is that a B? Let's get the... Oh, it's a B, a massive B as well, yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's not as a fly. It likes that gel or whatever you've got in. I know, yeah. It's the hairspray, <laughs> the fresh hairspray. <laughs> yeah, how different is a Monday morning if you win compared to if you lose? Very different, yeah. Yeah? You can just tell as soon as you go in the building. Yeah. The vibe's different. You go in the, you obviously go get changed, you go in the canteen for breakfast and head to down instead of up talking, you know? Yeah. And it does, it, affect, it affects the way the training ground, the, the, the vibe and the mood of the training ground because football's a winning game. You, you win, you do well, you don't, you don't. Mm. It's as simple as that, so it's a winning business. I suppose potentially if you walked in with a big smile on your face, it wouldn't go down that well. Exactly. <laughs> People say, what have you got happy oh, to be about? Yeah. yeah. Good weekend, was it? <laughs> Lost 3-0 at the weekend. But, um, yeah, so okay. I'm definitely one of them as well. Yeah, OK. All right, bit left field. I understand you're a cricket fan. I'm a cricket fan, yeah. I used to, uh, used to, obviously the Ashes has just gone. Uh, used to always watch when I was younger. Used to love the cricket, 2020 and even Test as well. I know some people find Test a little bit boring to watch, but me and Chile were in the canteen for hours watching it the other day, the Ashes. So, uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a fan. So you were glued to it, were you, the Ashes during the summer? Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? It was, it was exciting stuff. It was great stuff to watch. Um, yeah, and I've always liked to watch it. I was quite a sporty person in school, so I liked all the sports and cricket was definitely one um, high up on my list. Yeah. What do you remember? Like, a, is there a first cricket series, a first Ashes, a first T Twenty that you remember? Um, I think was it the two thousand and five Ashes? When yeah, I was going to think. You've you not been too young. What, what were you then? Eight, nine, eight, yeah, nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Flintoff stood there, when he like that, um, that's a, that sticks out for me. Sort of through that. Uh, Graham Swan, Kevin Peterson era, mm. but um, yeah, I was definitely a big fan of it, and I used to watch it all the time. So I just wonder what you made of Ben Stokes in the summer. Heroics. Uh, cool. Well, it, uh, I thought you were going to say Ben Stokes heroics, because what a summer he had. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I think um, he got obviously a lot of praise and stuff, but all thoroughly deserved, and sat there watching my mouth wide open, couldn't believe what I was seeing, especially obviously after the World Cup heroics, so then going putting innings in like he did uh, in the Ashes was um, just take my heart off to him, yeah. Is there anything transferable? Is there anything you can learn from watching a sportsman like that not only step up under pressure but raise his game massively under pressure? Yeah, self-belief. I think you could just see it. I think it, I can't remember if it was half century or a century. He barely even acknowledged it that... It, that was at the 50, yeah, it heading Lee. Nothing, nothing wasn't it? Yeah. No, nothing. Just get on with business because yeah. he knew he had a job to do. And it's similar in football, where you, sometimes you know you've got a job to do and the self-belief and the courage he showed was just phenomenal and there's definitely similar aspects in, in football of uh, that, that self-belief, that willingness to win, but also to stay calm in your head because if he, if he feels that courage himself and he starts slashing at things and then you start edging it then you get caught behind, but uh, it's, it's similar to football, if you say you get a, chance, a big chance at the end of a game that you've put everything into, uh, in that particular moment it's about staying cool and composed and, and finishing it. So you've uh, not quite won a World Cup for your country yet? Not quite, yet. But do you see yourself with the self-belief, the courage, as a like a big moments player? Would you like to think of yourself that way? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, to be a top player, I think you've got, you've got to produce big moments in big games. And like Ben Stokes, obviously it's not football, but that's the perfect example. And, and I think if you want to be seen as a, as a top player, and a top sports person in any sport, you've got to produce big moments in big games when the most people are watching. It doesn't matter if you can score a hat trick in a cup game on a Tuesday in front of 4,000 people. It's that that final, that um, that big moment with with the world watching when everyone's eyes are on you. Where that's where you really become a big player. So what happens then? Let's say Leicester won, Tottenham won. Time's running out. <laughs> what makes you want to be the man who decides that game? Um. I think that's just that, that drive within, you know. Obviously, it's, I think everyone would want to be that man. It's about, and listen, I only scored one winner. I'm not going on like I've had a summer of Ben Stokes. Um, but it's just about wanting, wanting to win. I think I've always had that. And I think there's, that's uh, installed in us here at Leicester. That we, uh, that fly back. That, he loves you, that fly. He Too much jail, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> But uh, yeah, that, that want to win and that willingness to win. And, I, and I've got I've always been a winner. Um, and one of my favourite quotes is, I can't remember who said it, is, <laughs> um, if you show me a good loser, I'll show you a loser. There's no such thing really, is there? I'm a bad loser because I love winning and 
that's installed in us here and we've had a good start to the season and I think if we go on with that mentality then I think we'll be alright. So what sort of guy are you really? Because you're an incredibly easy guy to have a chat with, people who know you talk about you being very humble, very down to earth, but there's always that almost like a suspicion maybe from the outside, oh, he's confident, is he too confident, is he arrogant, who are you really? I think a bit of everything you just said apart from the arrogant side, I mean I'd never want to come across as arrogant and I always say that because I said in an interview last week, there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance and I think if I got on the wrong side, for starters, my mum would give me a clip around the ear. And, um, but I'd never want to come across as that because that's not the, the values that I stand for. Um, I always talk about self-belief and confidence because no one's going to believe in you for you. You have to believe in yourself t t to start with and um, I've always done that and I've always been someone who's wanted to showcase my ability and my talent, which is, which is football and it always has been. So. Um, that's the type of guy I am, but I'm, I'd always like to think that I'm a down-to-earth, humble person because that's how I've been brought up, that's how my mum and dad have raised me, and I think I'm doing all right. I mean, they tell me they're proud of me every now and again, so I'm, <laughs> I must be doing something right. What do they make of you being a very good footballer? Yeah, listen, me and my dad, for starters, we have a, a very close relationship where we talk about football all the time. So after a game, we'll sit and almost debrief the game, sometimes watch the game back together. It's literally, I'm not just saying that because we're doing an interview, we actually do. And um, he'll say, I reckon you could have done this here. And I'll say, no, but why would I do that when I've got that? So we actually go into detail. And my mum's more the one who's, I'm, I'm a precious son, yeah. you know. Um, you were brilliant today, James. <laughs> yeah, you were brilliant. And I'm like, mum, no, I wasn't. Shut up. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've both been fantastic for me. And I'm, I'm just so lucky and grateful that I had a family that gave me the opportunity to to do this and I don't think I'd be scoring winners in the Premier League and Saturday where they both were there to watch if it wasn't for the dedication they put in for me when I was younger when they were tr um, making me like helping me with travel to Cardiff away on a Sunday morning with Coventry because there was no minibus travel and little things like that so it's important that and I'm, I'm, I never will but it's important that you never forget them moments like that. Really strip it back for us what is your job? Well if I'm playing eight my job is to create and score goals from that attacking midfield position but also be able to help in the build up as well because it's not like I'm playing as a number 10 constantly between the lines sometimes as a sided number 8 you have to be able to drop down and help with the build up as well because you only have one pivot player so sometimes it might be a case of the other 8 goes high and I have to drop down which I'm, which I'm comfortable doing I like doing that and it's also a lot more demand on the out of possession stuff of sliding, stopping passes through because like I always talk about the quality in the Premier League the Premier League is the best league in the world there's no doubt about it and the quality of the midfield players. If you are, if you're not sliding across quick enough and shutting them passing lines, the type of players that play in them positions, they just wrap it through in it, and it's through in their danger. Who's players. the best at that? Who's the best at playing through a team? I tell you, we play, from who we played this season, we played Chelsea, and Jorginho is very good at it. He's very good, and is he a footballer's footballer? He is, I mean. a, he is a very good footballer. I know he, maybe last year, on, on his first year, he got maybe a little bit of stick and stuff here and there. But he's a very good footballer, and he controls and dictates games. Harry Winks is another example. He's a very good passer of the ball because obviously we played Tottenham Saturday. So was, the job was to stop the play, slide, and get in an, as a narrow three, force it wide, stop the danger players getting it through the lines because that's that's what that's where they'll hurt you. But even then, when we're doing that really well, sometimes Harry Winks, the quality he had was able to play through and with a, with a quick wrap pass, two touch, receives it, turns and passes through. So that's the, that's the quality of opposition we play against. So there's never a moment where you can switch off and not do your defensive duties because you get punished and every camera's on you. So there's no, there's no hiding place because it comes to Monday, Monday Night Football and Jamie Carrier and Gary Neville are stood there pointing you out with a circle round you in slow-mo. So there's no getting away from it. So you have to put the work in. I'm just trying to think, have you ever been singled out on MNF in a bad way? I suppose it's not a bad way, it's, um, it's analysis if it's your fault. It's your I think there was one time last year we played Liverpool at home and I was one of the blockers from a defensive corner and Firmino got like a run on me, I tried to block him and he ended up heading it in. And I think there was a ring around me on that Monday Night Football, <laughs> so um, I turned that one straight off actually, turned the news on instead. <laughs> so you didn't, it wasn't a case, you were watching, were you? it wasn't a case that the old phone started pinging and... Uh... No, no, I always watch, I love, I always say it and I don't just say it because it's cliche or, or I do interviews. I love football, I always watch football. And Monday Night Football was the perfect example when in the, in the build to the kickoff and they go through all the games, analyse the goals. That's the, that's the time when me and my dad sit down and watch and talk football because it's a game and that's why we love it. I read an interview where Stephen Presley, who was the commentary manager, who first gave you a chance really, first put you on the bench. Yeah. He, he talked about calling you into training and immediately more senior players 
experienced players and you're, mm. you want the ball, you're demanding the ball immediately. I almost remember that like yesterday as well. I remember I was called in to train with the first team for the first time because there was a couple that had been in before me. Obviously I was only 16 at the time, literally just turned as well because we were, might have been just started the scholarship at Coventry and I remember thinking, this is an opportunity and obviously you're only 16 but I think I had quite a wise head on my shoulders at that age, well I'd like to think anyway, I mean <laughs> maybe if I watch back I'll probably think differently but um, I thought this is an opportunity to show here so I went and demanded the ball off the players and not everything worked and I probably got barged over a few times because I was about that big and this thin but <laughs> I think I showed him what I was about, the confidence and the, and the willingness to want to go and show him that I'm a good player and um, I think he liked that because uh, I went and trained again the next day so I must have done something right but um, yeah, he was brilliant for me, Stephen Presley, just a quick touch on that because he gave me an opportunity at a very young age, which in League One, a, a slight technical player, which I was, sometimes it's tough for managers to warrant putting you in because it's, you know what, it's like every manager's, what, five, six games away from getting sacked if you have a bad run of results, so I'll, I'm always grateful for that. How did you end up cleaning his car? Oh, well, um, I think it was actually because I think we did a, like a hydration test every 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 morning or whatever, and um, just to check that you basically you go and pee in a pot and it gets tested to make sure you're hydrated enough to make sure you're keeping on board your fluids and stuff. And I think I might have forgot to do mine, or I think yeah. I forgot to do it. And um, I remember saying he coming down, he said, "James, I need a word." And I was like, "Oh no!" My lips started going. I went upstairs, <laughs> and he said, "Listen." These are the standards that you've got to be on it every day. You can't forget little things like that. And it was a very good learning curve for me because I was there. I had to get a, a lift back off the manoeuvre driver separately because the lads had all gone because I was out there for an hour and a half washing his car. Um, it wasn't the most pleasant day either. And <laughs> did you do a good job? I did, I did a fantastic... He came down and checked halfway through and I think he even might have... I didn't know whether he was joking at the time, but he said, that's not clean enough on, on the bonnet. And I was like, I just did 45 minutes on the bonnet, for <laughs> Christ's sake. But... Um, yeah, it was, all, it was all good and all part of my development. So, um, I wanted to ask you, the dream of being a footballer, how does it compare to the reality? How has it panned out? Oh, it's, it's perfect, because I always say whenever, whether it's playing in a school match or in my nan's back garden to walking out at Wembley last season when we played Tottenham or Old Trafford or the King Power, it's, you still get that same feeling of doing what you love. and. Playing in the Premier League, I always say it was a dream of mine from a young boy and now I'm fulfilling that dream and loving every moment, relishing every moment. Are there little moments that stick with you, coming up the tunnel, go, coming face to face with a, an opponent, someone you just never thought you'd be stood next to? I think on my Premier League debut was the one where... Was it United? Was it U yeah. oh, at Old Trafford, yeah, United away. Stood there in the tunnel, Mourinho walks past and, and Pogba and Co. And you're just like, I'm here now, I've, I've arrived. And now it's time to go and show everyone what I can do. Because you work so hard to get to them moments, and I don't think you can take them for granted. You know, it's a case of obviously staying grounded. It's my debut, but after the game, I, I did think to myself, just played at Old Trafford there in the Premier League, something that I dreamed of as a, as a young boy. And um, so yeah, little moments like that will, will stick with me forever. Yeah. Well, so being a footballer is amazing. What about the fame side of it? Because I always remember Danny Alves saying, like, being a footballer is incredible, but being famous in itself, he doesn't really enjoy, he finds yeah. it difficult. What about you? It, is, it can be difficult and that's I think a side that people don't necessarily see because of the recognisable face and stuff. I mean, I went, I'll tell you a story, we went for dinner the other day and so obviously we get asked for grab some pictures which is fine, I'll never ever say no because... In I town was this? In town, yeah, uh, just getting some food and it was, uh, it was actually in London but we were getting food, we were in, having dinner, yeah, and obviously we have recognisable faces now we play in the Premier League and stuff. I think I was with Chile. Um, and I'm, I'm all up for autographs and pictures because I'd do the same. If I seen Ed Sheeran there, I'd ask him for a picture, you know what I mean? He'd be the one, would he? Yeah, Ed, <laughs> I'm a big fan. Um, so yeah, but we're in mid-dinner, so I've got like spaghetti bolognese all around my face <laughs> and uh, someone comes up and asks for a picture without using manners, which is fine. Like Sometimes you get a bit Maybe yeah. if you see someone you want a picture with, you forget about stuff like that. But I said, OK, uh, can I just finish my dinner? And I went, oh, sorry, but I've got a shoe. It's all right, like, can we do it now? And I just, it just didn't sit well with me because I think whether it's me or whether you're speaking to whoever, a waiter or whatever. Yeah, it's basic just manners. Speak with manners and respect and uh, he might be watching, so maybe he, he, a lesson was learned. But, um, yeah, it didn't sit well with me because I think you should always have manners and basic respect for, for, for people no matter who they are. And, 
oh, that wasn't shown on that display. Uh, are there certain things that you can't do? Things that you know, normal life bits that just are shut off to you now? Um, oh yeah, if I wanted to go and get a coffee in town now after this. You're always having coffee at no, but I mean, I can't do it and yeah. I can't just go and have a co quiet coffee to myself because no. you get recognised and it's similar. But that's something you deal with and something you learn with. And I can understand why Danny Alves would say that because you can never just switch off in public. You know, you always get, you always watch. Someone's phone's always on you. You know, do your hair. So that's why I always do my barn. It's going to fall out <laughs> in a few years. But <laughs> but yeah, you're always watching. The camera's always on you and stuff. So, um, but it is what it is. You, you learn to deal with it and. I kind of just get on with it now, yeah. So free time, what do you like to do? Once you're done with me, what are you going to do? I leave it on. I'm going to go and have a latte. Of course you are. Um, <laughs> no, I like, I, we do lots of things. We always go out. We have quite a social change room here as well, especially like the lads that live locally. So chilly, me and Ben will always go and do something. I mean, yeah. I won't just go home and sit on, the, sit on the sofa or sit in bed. We'll go and, normally we go and go out for dinner somewhere nice. We'll go mini golf and whoever loses pays for dinner and stuff like that just to keep. We like socialising, you know what I mean? So. What is the mini the mini golf like a nine hole type nah, thing? Four eight. There's there's a place in Leicester that's just opened. It's full uh, eighteen hole, two eighteen hole courses on, on the property. So, do a oh. bit of advertisement for them there, aren't they? It's actually <laughs> really good. Get yourself down. Um, <laughs> another yeah, free round good. coming. Yeah, another free round coming. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's good fun. Eighteen holes and lose a pace for dinner. So chilly normally pays. <laughs> Uh, what else sort of in the evening? Box sets, a bit of that? Yeah, like a good box set, yeah. Um, like a good film. Last I'm film not... you watched, last box set? Watched a film last night, Law Abiding Citizen, which I hadn't watched in a few... Oh, you've never watched it? No, no, no. One of my... One of, arguably, if not my favourite film. Yeah. Right. Gerard Butler, worth a watch. I can't believe I haven't watched it. No. A bit no, disappointed, no. actually, you know. Oh, that's not the one where he's a dad and he goes a bit mad? Yeah. Oh, I think I have seen it. You have, yeah. I don't want to ruin it for the Do viewers, but if you it. haven't watched it, go and watch it. Wow. Wow. Right, James, thanks very much for your time. No problem. That's your first all. off script. Thank you. Enjoyed it. <laughs>